I'm Nicole King, and this is Marbella Now. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. Hey, 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 it's a brand new day. Welcome back to the program. I'm delighted to have as my first guest of the day, Chris Kevill. He was on the show a couple of weeks ago and a very interesting subject. So I thought it worthwhile to catch up with Chris to see how the project is advancing because as I said it's a very worthwhile one. Chris, welcome back to Marbella now. Thank you very much, Nicole. Oh, um, it's absolute pleasure and I really, really appreciate you asking me back. Uh, it's... it's um, you were so grateful the first time, and your project is so inspiring. And then Chris and I also coincided at the Marbella Arena when we went to see the tribute bands, which was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it certainly was. Yeah. But I saw there you suffer with your back. I mean, is this something, you're a veteran. Yeah. Is this something that you've inherited from those days, or is this something non-related? Uh, it, it's probably something that I inherited from those days, and uh, your son-in-law is helping me. <laughs> so James Wheeler, JC Wheeler, <laughs> massage so and physio. I, I'm seeing him tomorrow at 12 o'clock. So, so yeah, your son-in-law's helped me out with that. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, Is that how you're finding Marbella in general? In a sense, I know you through Catherine Stevenson. She rents out VIP, really luxurious, top brand cars. Yeah. You and her knew each other. She suggested you speak to me. Are you finding in general that you're getting a lot of support as you go meeting people? Yes, it's it, networking. It's, it's, it's that, that's what it's all about. You know, I, I, I met Catherine uh, and she pushed me to you. Uh, and I met Bill who works at the boxing gym that your son-in-law works at. Uh, and he pushed me to him and Catherine, it's, it's, it's all about networking, it's all about meeting people and this is what Objects All is all about, is about communication. And uh, it's getting the right people in contact with those who need your services and that's what's so lovely about Marbella in the sense of you can network and you meet loads of people but it's meeting the right people that empathise with what your missions are that can help you with your goals and I think it's a nice thing when you're talking about mental health and well-being and living our best lives I think all of us can relate to that. Yeah they, they, there's always somebody out there so there's always somebody that can help there's, you know you, you, so I, I, I posted on social my social media site is up and running now. Congratulations. So, thank you again uh, so I have uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram, but they're, they're just a signpost to my website to, uh, to, to get people to communicate on the website. But it, it's, I, I posted something yesterday and it's saying, you know, you have two ears and one mouth. And there's a reason for that is because you have to listen more than you talk. So, you know, it, you, you, you might talk to somebody no, and they will hear you, but they don't know what you're saying. They're not so really they, listening. No, exactly. So you, you, you have two ears and one mouth. On this platform to communicate, the idea is that people at any time of the day or night who feel lonely or need to connect can go online and find somewhere, somewhere around the world who's awake and ready to chat. Yeah. Is there a, um, is this physical, like looking at each other chatting? Is it just typing, chatting, or is it going to be anything the person wants to get that relationship going? What's the idea? What do you envision? For no, the, at the minute, it's, it's, you can create your alias, as I said last time. So you can be Mickey Mouse123. So, and nobody knows who you are. But they can talk to each other and they can. They can open up, they can, they can express themselves because they're embarrassed about talking to their friends or family because they, they don't want people to know how they feel. So it might be the person that they're talking to. So it could be me, I'm Mickey Mouse 123 and you're Donald Duck 234. It could be us talking to each other. 
but we don't know. Uh, so they've got the anonymity, which is obviously reassuring. Yeah, it, uh, and, uh, you know, if, if they want to, they can swap phone numbers, they can WhatsApp each other eventually, uh, you know, that, that's up to them. It's but, just but to get the, people connected. There are pe people who want to talk, but they are embarrassed about talking to people that they know. Can you go into that? I'm sure firsthand you must have seen things that I don't even want to know, and you're probably not even allowed to tell. When one no. lives with, and I, li I liked it when you said any, all trauma to someone is significant, but when you've gone through the type of things you have, why is it hard to speak to family members or friends? Because I think this is the hardest thing for you people. Feel weak. Uh, you, you, you said it last time we, we were here, you know, they, aren't you meant to be strong as a military man? Uh, you feel weak, you feel you know, you, you've served on front lines, or you know, you, you've you've done things that majority of people haven't done, uh, and so to admit that you have a problem, you feel weak, so, and you feel like, and then uh, a lot of people they they leave the military, and they haven't spent that. Uh, that <laughs> sorry, I mean, I'm, uh, they, they leave the military and then they spend a lot of time with their family, which is never spent. So because they're always spending time on front lines or under the water or on the sea or, or in the air or, or whatever. So, and then all of a sudden they leave the military and then they're with their wife 24-7. Uh, and they've never had that. Also, imagine you're using machinery and equipment that's worth millions and the responsibilities that you take on and then when you leave that environment to find one's position I know just when I became a mother how do you switch from being like the party person bubbly and to now being a responsible mother who wears a bra and has to do the things that you're meant to do as a as a respectable mother it's hard to find your yeah, new place in life with ch any change the changes you it's a, it's see massive, must be quite it's overwhelming. A, it's a massive change, yeah. So, you know, you, you, you get married or you, you have a girlfriend, you have a child, but you still work at sea. And then you come back from sea and you leave the military and then you spend all the time and you realise that you don't actually get on that well with, with, with the person that you love uh, and you have a child with. Uh, so then you start arguing and then, you know, it, that, that's a downward spiral. And I, I sent you the video today, which obviously we can't release at the minute, but, it's, um, but that kind of tells the story. It, it, it is a downward spiral. And if you log into the website, uh, then you, you will see on my bio. So what that video is all about. And I think it sums it up very well. And hopefully with Up Jigsaw, or the end of the video, the uh, show's going around on the beach and we're, you know... Uh, You're very invested in this project. It's obviously very close to your heart. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> so, you've got this tattoo, it looks very painful to me, but I'm sure it's going to be quite gorgeous. This is the concept. Op, Operation Jigsaw. Yeah. You've done a jigsaw puzzle, which is your logo. You're mm -hmm. looking for sponsors, I believe, to colour in... The well, uh, I've got one, which is um, uh, a, a very, very good friend of mine, uh, Peter Henderson, uh, Grant and Grass. So he's sponsored the first one, but it was it was too early to do it. But like Isha, the the tattoo studio in Mobile, um they're going to touch it up for free so, to to fill it back in. But I just want to get some colour in it. Um, but yeah, and this so, is so this is symbolic for you, yes. in the sense of is this to inspire you to continue? Because obviously, you have a big vision, and it's another big mission. But it doesn't happen overnight. You're going to have to piece by piece put this together, get the, the information out there, get people involved. Nicole, you've just you've just hit it on the head there, piece by piece. So no. what have you got left to do? What are the next immediate steps that we can do to help in what you're doing? Well, uh, what, what you've done for me is get the word out even further. So, so I thank you for that. Uh, I, and I really do. I'm, I'm so appreciative of that. And 
Uh, last time I was here, I was very nervous. Uh, this time I'm more relaxed, and I want to thank you and Mobia TV and you know just uh, Mobia Now TV. So you're to, very welcome. No, uh, to to help me getting the the word out. Now I want to get it out further, but it's step by step. I uh, it things happen very very fast. Um, but it's getting there. So we can With follow the Facebook, which is Op Jigsaw. Yeah. We can follow you on Instagram. Yeah. Op Jigsaw. Yeah. We go to the website and we register. And you because load. even if you don't feel that you've got a, a problem emotionally, maybe you are willing to chat with somebody and be there when they want to speak to someone. So yeah, it really is a communication point for everybody. There are no limitations of type um, of mental no, it, it's, um, it's, it's distress or... Uh, it, even if you don't have mental health issues, you can still register. So maybe, maybe you have insomnia. So you're awake and you just want to talk to somebody, but maybe somebody has mental health issues and they don't want to talk about their mental health issues. But you're awake, they're awake. Just talk. It's not WhatsApp. It's not Facebook. It's not... Instagram. I do have Facebook, Instagram, uh, but that is purely to signpost people to the website. Uh, it's 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 not a social media site. I I, I said this the first time. It's, it's not about social media. You can't scroll through people's profiles. What do you see as a difference, for example, than people connecting on a Facebook or on an Instagram? Probably for me, it's the anonymity of it that you can connect with these people but without saying who you are the, which the, does give you the ability to just open be up. To open up open up yeah just just be who you are just you you can people on facebook though my friends on facebook they know me a lot of them maybe they don't so we just uh, are you on facebook yeah i'm on facebook let's add each other as a friend we never talk uh, instagram is more of a, a business model uh, but this is just, you can be whoever you want to be, and you can talk to whoever somebody else wants to be. Right, without having that, having uh, the, to the, face up to it or... The, the pressure of saying, you know, to, it's like, I, I text you. Uh, or I, I post something on Facebook and you can read my post. So this is purely the anonymity, that, like you said, it's... It, it's purely just being totally anonymous. You can say who you are if you want. You can swap numbers if you want. So you can build up relationships if you want. So, or friendships. It's just having that someone there and getting it global, obviously, helps that people are awake when others are insomniacs or, yeah. or whatever, exactly, yeah, just exactly. to get the... Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful concept. Oh. So what we all can all do, obviously, is sign up to the website. I should do so myself. I haven't done so yet, but I will do. I don't think I have e either. I've been so busy. Well, don't busy, you think so. we need to... <laughs> so you have, you have to lead by example. So no, 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 we no. Need to, you need to sign up to your own website because I've heard it's really good. It's all anonymous no. and no. you can just share no, your stuff. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm not even sure if I've actually logged into my own website yet because I've been so busy trying to sort trying to think of the next the next step well sometimes um, it's good to just stop enjoy the success that you've already got that you've got this far which is very important to celebrate each piece of the puzzle as um, it fits together so that you enjoy the ride because the nice thing is you're creating something for a lifetime well, and, well uh, you'll yeah, never yeah. be done. It'll always be growing and adapting. No, but but yeah, yeah, you're 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 a piece of the puzzle. You you've helped me move forward. Uh, yeah, you know, it's 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 absolutely beautiful. You know, Catherine. Uh, yes, <laughs> good old Catherine. The lovely Catherine Stevenson. So uh, you know, she she introduced us, and it's you know, you you're you're part of the puzzle. You no, know, you're part of this. You're you're part of taking it forward and. I, I'm I, sure all of this, our city is delighted to help you. And there's a lot of people who say we've got Lucy coming on now. Book Lucy, and she's doing a lovely book review um, about Vivian Lee and Sir Lawrence Olivier, which is a passionate, mad love affair, which is I'm looking forward to. But she suffered, Vivian Lee, with mental health issues. Yeah. And in those days, no one knew what even bipolar was. She was just a difficult 
actress. Mm. So a lot yeah. of people, I d actually personally don't like the term mental health. I think it makes us all feel a bit, it should just be, it's if someone's mm. just a uh, little bit really angsty, anxiety, a bit of stress, need someone to chat to, it's, yeah. you don't have no, to be, no, no, I, 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 have I a mental I, health I, I issue. I totally agree, I totally agree. Well, uh, Chris, I look forward to seeing you the next time. Uh, don't go away. Chris will be back, in, I'm sure, in another couple of weeks to keep us posted so we can all get involved and help this growing community. And I'll be back in a moment with Lucy Chivers out Book Lucy. John's car is still being repaired, so he's delighted that Judy has come to pick him up. However, after a very heavy business trip, He's less than enthusiastic when her car breaks down. I had sure with Linia Director. She tells John. So please do relax. I've got this. And she had. The taxi was there in no time. Her car safely towed for repairs and a courtesy car readily available. Call Linear Director on 952-1478-34 to see how they can better your life too. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Hi guys, Ross here from Hoganstan. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And, uh, we recommend everybody, nobody drives drinking, everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system and we're proud to sponsor Zero Hero Program. GYN is happy to be Zero Hero Partner. How cool is that? <laughs> GYN. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze, and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? My dear friend Lucy Chivers is a fanatic and avid reader of books. Person, probably the only person who reads more than her is her sister Vivi. And together they just get through books that like, just amazes me. Very big fans of the bookshop in the Colony Shopping Centre with Alithia there, which is a, actually a very lovely bookshop. So if you haven't been, you should go. But you order books there, Lucy. You buy books there. You've always... Your house is full of books. Yes. And so Lucy's become our book, Lucy, for the program, giving us some um, feedback on some of the things that you've read. And I'm loving the subject of today. Welcome back to the program, first thank of you. all. Thank you. Thank you. You've been missed. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so I love that you've chosen Truly Madly. Yes. I think it's nice to have a real romance story but a heartbreaking romance oh, story is. really it and quite relative because we spoke to Chris about mental health and Vivian Lee it turns out actually suffered from mental health issues that were undetected back in in the day so uh well yeah because it was not diagnosed for years and she really suffered and the marriage suffered because of it and it, it's so so sad no, <laughs> what attracted you to read the book in the first place well it's actually written by the son of a very good friend of mine and he works in Hollywood um, so Norman said to me oh, do you want to read it and I said oh yes please and I'm not a huge fan of biographies but this it really took you it takes you in and you can see the people you can see where where they are what they're doing and it really takes you in and I couldn't, I couldn't put it down. I so really Stephen couldn't. Galloway is the author, yes. son of your friend Norman. Yes. And so it's nice that you've got to know the book from something so personal. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, this is a real novel. This is a, oh, no. a full-fledged story. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so interesting because it goes through the films they did together, the ones they didn't do together, um, the marriage... 
the, the heartbreak. I mean, it was, it's just so sad at the end um, when she was really ill and he came to see her and then she died. But were they still together no. when... No, they were divorced by then. So the, the actual, her problem did create a big wedge. I know that the first time I understood that she'd had a noticeable mental dep depression was after she lost her, when she was pregnant and she had a miscarriage. And that kind of seemed to really spark everything yeah. off and change directions. I think she had it before and then it really came out then. So but when um, what what was the things of the reading the book that for you were the most like iconic moments or the most surprising when you were were reading it? Um, well, Gone with the Wind, obviously, because that's one of my favourite films. Um, the things that he did for her, and the things she did for him, and it was just them together at the beginning. It was just the the love. They couldn't bear to be apart. Because it really was. They were both married to yes. other people when they first came together and then they started the film together. And as I understood it, that they didn't do Rebecca together because of their passionate love affair, but they were married and it was just not the thing to do no. in, the, in the day. Well, she, she saw him, I think it was 1936, in a play... And she was watching it, and she said to her friend, that's the man I'm going to marry. And, and her friend I hopefully reminded her, you already are married, <laughs> my dear. <laughs> yes, I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they met, and they just fell in love, and nothing else mattered. It was so a, re a, really pa a really story of passion. Yeah, oh yeah. But yeah. how sad, again, because of this undiagnosed mental issue, that she didn't get any help, and that obviously... Her husband couldn't understand why she was being such a fruitcake. I, th I think he under well, he didn't understand, obviously, because nobody did. Um, and I think that did, and her and her drinking. Oh, so she also took to alcohol. I well, he know. was he dr he drank. Everyone did they, then, didn't they? But she really, really drank <laughs> a lot. Very sad, isn't it? When you think the glorious. Hollywood, the golden years, it's like there's so much finesse about the whole thing with Hollywood, it was so chic and the costumes and the outfits and the dinners and the stoles and yet really like anyone, anywhere, it's just a, yeah. a guy and a girl trying to get through yeah. life. But they, I mean, the way it's written, you get into their, into their romance, you can understand from both sides, and it's very poignant, very. Do you know if we, where we can get this book? I know you've got yours from Norman, but if anyone else would like to read Truly Madly, what would they have to do? I'd just go to a bookshop. So it's available, readily available? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's been in the um, bestseller lists for, a, well, not, I can't remember when it was actually pulpage, not long ago earlier this year, but it is out. Fabulous. So you recommend this highly, it would seem? Absolutely. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of biographies, but this I would definitely recommend. Well, well done, Stephen Galloway, for writing something well. I have to say that it's nice when you get a, someone who writes well. It really doesn't matter, the subject matter, no, if they make it interesting and bring you into the story. Yeah, it, it, that's beautifully written. Anything else that we should be looking out for to read on the horizon that you've enjoyed? Oh, I've just read so many. <laughs> um, the chap that read, um, he wrote Shadows of the Wind. Um, he's Spanish. Um, he's just had a new book out for short stories. And I can't remember his name. It's just gone out of my head. Oh, but you <laughs> write short sorry. stories. Yeah. Like he was saying to Lucy, not she like needs to him. publish some of her short stories. You've got some good no. short stories. Not like him. <laughs> you actually go to, or did go to, a writing club. Do you still do that? It's, a, for, it's finished for the summer. So, But I, that's a nice thing. There's a lot of things, if you like reading and you like writing, 
there are a lot of things that you can do regarding literature in our local community that there you is. might not realize that so there are book clubs or you can go and do learn how to write and get guidance in that and then you have bookshops like uh, the bookshop in the colony as I say I'm only saying that one in particular just because the owners are so involved and they read everything and they recommend everything and they, they got very lovely books for children and they had book reading with children and, and they do a reading book group as well so um, see lots of things going yeah. on Lucy thank you ever so much it's a pleasure <laughs> book Lucy don't go away back in a minute Hero, welcome here. here. And they now join the rooms. Let the music get to your heart. Let it set you on your way. No time to hesitate. And welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Tearing us apart. Poison arrows shoot straight to your heart. Siro Giro, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. Hi guys, Casa Tua is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. Regular viewers or followers of my social media and my column Marbella Moments will know that I have a new puppy. He's now 10 months old. His name is Boy and is a teacup toy Pomeranian. And knowing that little dogs live a long time, my beautiful darling was 16 when she passed away, I realized that I need to do something to make sure that my puppy behaves himself so that I have a pleasant life together with the animal that I love. And with this in mind, I was recommended to speak to George. And he's here, because I haven't managed to get to the point where actually starting the training, I thought the best way is to bring you to the set, get to know you and commit myself to uh, doing something with my puppy. George, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Nicole. Thank you so much for taking the time to come to the studio. You're much younger than I anticipated. Right. I thought it would be like a really old guy that's got all these years of it. I, I, I get that a lot, actually. <laughs> but you have an amazing reputation. So firstly, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Lucy gave me your number, but I have heard of you from so many people that said you need to speak to George. So everyone wanted to give me your number. This was a general consensus. So well, that's very nice. Congratulations. How long have you been out here? Uh, I've been living out here for about 13 years now. Okay. And, um, <laughs> well, my mum was here and she moved us over here and they've gone back now. So I'm, I was already, stayed. yeah, I was already walking dogs and starting to work with dogs at that point. So I decided, you know, this is where I want to be. It's a lovely thing to dedicate to. My son, we call him our dog whisperer. He's very good with animals. He loves them. I always say to him, you should do something with what you love. And that's obviously your passion. You found a passion. And they obviously like you, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to train them, right? How does this work? You need to be able to connect with an animal and understand how, how that connection works and how to communicate with them in a way that, that works, really. Well, I have no communication with my Pomeranian. When I want to, for example, go for a walk, take him for a walk, he loves his walk, mm -hmm. but he wants to play. Right. And I know that's probably my fault that I haven't played with him enough because he's a puppy. But when I give him that moment of attention, okay, let's go for your walk, he starts chasing. He doesn't want to come. I'm scared to ever take yeah. him off his lead because he'll just go. So it's, it's, not, it's not that you haven't played with him enough. It's that it, those times are the times that he's getting very excited for one reason or another and that's what you want to change to make the walks go more smoothly for you so you can take your dog anywhere and have them w have him walk with you through any situation. Yeah, now I have to leave and pretend that I've gone and I wait outside for like 10-15 oh, minutes. Oh you're, you're talking about... When, and then I go right. back and then he's so happy to see me that I grab him and put his lead on him and then I can take him for a walk. Right. But I have to do a whole tricking system that I'm sure with the yeah. right training. No, is no, you, you'd be better off walking him through that so leash comes out. For example, one, one thing that I recommend people do when, when dogs get excited about the leash coming out is just take the leash out of the cupboard or from wherever you have the leash, put it over your neck pretty much and then just walk around the house, make yourself a coffee, sit down, read a book, put the TV on, and then, you know, after 15 minutes of doing that, take the leash back to 
its living place, right, and just put it down. Now, initially, your dog's going to be quite excited thinking, hey, this is it, we're going for a walk now. But if you just practice that a little bit every day, you're going to really calm your dog before taking him right, out Right, because it's for like that dopamine know that they see leash oh this my god I, and people unconsciously reward that state of mind by just getting the leash on the dog quickly and taking him out for the walk that he wants to get on but it's a it's a hassle when your dog's that excited when you're just trying to get leashes on and stuff so you want to be able to do that nice and calmly leave the house nice and calmly and at certain times you can let your dog know when he can get excited when playtime is um, but you don't want to do that at the wrong time at the wrong time, you know, or have him getting excited about dogs that he's not going to be playing with. Yeah, I get the thing is for me, I feel guilty because a lot of times I just say to him, okay, this is your last warning, I'm going without you. Right. And in the end, I go without him and it's like the whole idea of me going was to take him in the first place. Exactly, exactly. So it's uh, quite it, frustrating. It's just understanding what your dog has learned about that situation over time and through repetitions of doing it. And if you want to change something there, you have the power and ability to do that because you are your dog's pack leader. He should take and follow your direction. Um, but a lot of people, they just share affection with their dog all the time. So you need to share exercise and discipline and affection. Like with, with your children. Dog. Exactly the, exactly the same as with children. Exactly it's no same. good just all love. It has to be it's some kind of Exactly. Which is better then for them too. Absolutely. Your dog's going to feel safer with you. He's going to feel protected by you. He's going to feel comfortable taking your direction. Um, but for that, to, for that to happen, he really needs to view you as the leader in his life. Interesting. Well, I know that I definitely have to hire your services and organize this. What kind of... I would like that when commenting before, that I said my puppy's 10 months old, you know, go okay, up to a year, you're kind of okay to... Uh, yeah, year one is really the crucial time for shaping that puppy to be the puppy you want them to be. Um, so a lot of the people that I work with don't put the work into their puppies when they're young and they kind of wait until they're older and then problems develop and then they need to fix these problems. Mine was six months old when I spoke to you the first time. Right. He's now ten months old, so <laughs> right. I really need to get, my, get a So I'm, I'm happy to help you out with him, Nicole. Uh, he sounds like a real character. He is, he's a great <laughs> character. But little dogs do have a lot of character. Uh, I don't have a bitey, yappy one. He can be. Little dogs, little dogs can get away with more, that's for sure, you know. Um, yes, we yeah. had very big dogs, and one of them actually terrorized. We had 11 dogs, and then we got the 12th one in, a Doberman, right. and he didn't go to bite them, but he'd body slam them. Right, I mean, just he using literally his strength. Just his literal yes. strength, and obviously you can have a little dog that you know, bites your ankles, and you just kick it away, <laughs> like go away. Right, right. But you're not, and so obviously, not necessarily, it's just the size, uh, it's not, force it's not, them. again, dog psychology is the same for all dogs, no matter what size they are, it could be a Great Dane or it could be a Chihuahua, it doesn't matter what size it is, it's the same psychology that they understand and that we need to apply. Um, when people think of their dogs as little humans and they hu apply human psychology, that's when they get confused and they don't understand why their dog does the things that they do. Because your dog's not a little human, he is a dog, so we have to learn about dogs to be able to help them. Because they are actually very expressive in the sense of when I, my children growing up, we had always had animals and dogs and it was really nice because I didn't have to talk, teach my children basically anything about anything because the oh. dogs just did everything. Right, <laughs> they got right. to learn and you see how we had um, white German shepherds and when one, like the mother had the puppies, she would only let her mother look after the puppies even though there were two other females. And you get to see that there's a family set up that they have hierarchy, that it is important that there is a leader, they need a leader. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, very important. So, if someone has an animal that's even more than a year old, because obviously we don't all realise in time, and I'm nearly out of time having started to speak to you four months ago, what are the, the process? Is it a lifelong thing? What's the time, kind of time span is someone looking at to say, okay, I'm going to get George to train my dog, what kind of are we looking at? What's the procedure? So, really, uh, what, what people should do is they should put the work into their puppy in year one. If you take a rescue dog, if you take an older dog um, from a shelter, for example, that's different. But if you are fortunate enough to have a puppy that is under a year old, then that is really the crucial time for shaping that dog into being the dog you want him to be for the rest of his life. You know? so and that's, the, that's a very big point. For example, little dog, 16 years. If I don't want 15 years of having to play games with my dog, I need to take 
control of the situation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You don't want to have to be doing this, leaving him and coming back and putting the leash on for the rest of his life. Uh, so, so just teaching him how to be calm in that situation now, and then later on you won't have to because you've already put the work into him when he was young. So it's actually it's an obligation. It's a moral yeah. obligation. Yeah. If we say we love our animals, but it's not too late for you now. Yes, at ten months, it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> you can put. Because also, there is benefit. I want to be able to take him off the leash and he'd be able to walk and do his thing and this just is come what back everybody wants to be able to do yes yes without so someone stealing him though exactly yeah there's <laughs> a lot of things that you need to be worried about um, but to do that you're really going to have to form a good relationship with him and build trust and respect with him so that he can follow your direction in these situations and not just do his own thing or run off or run to the first person he looks at and looks exciting or dog exactly know. he loves dogs exactly. he's very social exactly. well you've very got to start social. off on leash if your dog's not listening to you when he's two feet away from you he's not going to be listening to you when he's 10 feet or further away from you so you've got to start off with basic obedience on leash close to you pretty much do you visit people's homes? Do they go to you? I, I work with people one-on-one -on -one and I work with people in the home, in the environment where they live and the dog lives. That's where um, I think most of the, the good work really takes place. But really... Because you're more educating the owner than the exactly animal. This is exactly it. Yeah, exactly. You, you have to teach people. You have to really be a human trainer and a dog trainer second to get long-lasting results. It's no good just going in and teaching a dog or training a dog and not teaching the owner any anything because they'll end up with more problems later on. It's really this understanding of dog psychology that all owners should have and it will make their life much easier when they understand the animal that they live with. Well, it definitely makes a lot of sense and having the opportunity to catch this now before my puppy gets bigger, I'm going to do this without a doubt. But also something that Lucy and I were talking about, because I met you through Lucy, was that you're a musician and you play and do gigs and we want to come and oh, yes. go to one of your Fantastic. gigs. So oh, yeah. Tell me a bit about your we music. We would love to uh, have you come down to a gig. So um, I'm in a cover band, so we do rock music, rock covers, stereophonics, uh, Pearl Jam. Um, I've slightly gone blank now. But, oh, you uh, weren't expecting it, me to ask you about I wasn't about expecting your, you to ask about me about your this. music. Um, Foo Fighters, so we, we do a lot of covers, and we're playing a gig in, uh, on the 29th of this month in Louis Louis Bar. In Estepona. In Estepona. I haven't been there, but it sounds very, very nice. It is really, it's a great place for a gig. You should really come down. Place. And they have good bands there, so this is a this is a. It's a, a big one. one. It's yeah, a big it's a one big for one. us, yes. Fabulous, and what's your band's name? At times like these, which uh, is a Foo, Fight, Foo Fighters song, so yeah. We've that's just great. Actually, I went to the tribute concert in the Marbella Arena just I recently. I did as well. I fantastic. thought they were awesome. They were amazing. I, yeah, mean, I said really to Lucy, good. "There's Led Zeppelin." I mean, I yes. was just, it was. They were yeah, And amazing. the Foo Fighters, but I was, it was just awesome. I loved it. They were great. They were great. That was very exciting. Okay, so 29th. 29th, Louis of Louis. July, I don't know what Louis time Louis, that is. Estepona to see times like times these. like these times yes. like these <laughs> and also if you want to train your dog times like these I'm yeah, perfect if you want to get in touch with me then packinstinct.com um you can go there and do you cover the whole coast what's your uh so pretty much uh, i do cover the whole coast um I will go as You're far as I need to go. You're yeah. based in Marbella kind of thing. Based in Marbella, Estepona. So and I suppose once you meet the dog and the owners, you then get to assess how much training is needed. So you do like an evaluation. Absolutely, On yes. the first day to give them guidance. Or Certainly. And we've got different training programs to, um, you know, cater for different situations and different dogs. Okay. Well, I've got a little tiny dog with a lot of personality. I really, I really <laughs> want to meet him. Oh, really he's really cool. <laughs> His name's Boy. Boy. Yeah. Oh, that's a good name. <laughs> he's a, Fantastic. He's a good boy. Good, good, good. So are you. A pleasure to meet oh, you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank and you so you much too, for Nicole. coming, George. I know we'll be seeing more of you. And I think once I get a uh, boy with training, I nearly brought him to the studio today. Hey, that would have been great. But when I was doing the interview, like I've tried to have him with me, like my mother dog, who was older. And he was like, in the end, I was just wearing him on my head. He was oh, just right. climbing up it. <laughs> yes. So Again, like, little uh, dogs getting away with a little bit too much, possibly. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> next time, I will uh, bring him, because he would have done some training by then, and we'll see, uh, see yeah. how it goes, just so you can... You can show me what to do to keep him quiet so he could be a TV star. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yes. George, thank you ever so much. <laughs> That's okay, thank you. Don't go away because we'll be back again in just a moment with our CIT Marbella Guest of the Week. Hey, hey. All right, guys, so I'm the designated driver tonight, so I'm going to choose the Zero Hero place. 
so all of my soft drinks are for free. And if you want to go somewhere else, just check out the Facebook, Instagram, or the ZeroHero.es website for any of the bars, discotheques, or restaurants on there. I'm happy to go anywhere you want to go, as long as it's Zero Hero. Magnosis is proud to be a Zero Hero partner. a new partner of Zero Hero. We are well, proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. CIT Marbella is a business networking association and for years now, I'd have to say probably a decade, between the radio with iTalk in the day and now here with Marbella now, they've been coming, to sending a member of the group to the program and it's wonderful to get to meet different people. It's a predominantly Spanish association when it started off, although there are a lot of international businesses that have joined on in the last few years, I'm pleased to say. But it really is a very established group that has very good connections and they work very hard to promote the member group. So joining me today is Francisco and he's from Mi Colchon, my mattress. And I really think it's an interesting thing <laughs> to talk about because actually it's what we all have in common. We love Marbella, we love ourselves and we all need to have a comfortable night's sleep. Yep. <laughs> so Hi, Nicole. Francisco, <laughs> lovely to meet you. Nah, thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. You are part of the marketing group yes. for Mi Colchon, which I think I translated correctly. Correct. My mattress. Yes, yes, my mattress. And I love it because I've lived in Spain for many, many years and I seem to remember that name always. Yeah, so it's yeah. a very established w Yeah, we, we have more than 40 years of experience in, in that area. Uh, we started El Palo, a little town uh, by the sea. So we, we've, we've, we've been growing and we, we have uh, now a lot of stores all along the all along Costa del Sol. We have uh, stores in uh, Marbella, here in San Pedro Alcántara, Benalmadena, Fuengirola, uh, Malaga City. We have a lot of stores too. We have the largest exposition uh, in El Viso with more than 2,000 square meters. We, we have a, a lot to offer. So really, in 40 years, it's uh, grown tremendous. Is it a family business? Yes, it started as a family, a family business. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A it's family a business and a Spanish yeah, business. Yes, yes. And uh, in, the, in the team, we, we all like, like a family too. <laughs> so do you sell to boutiques? Do you sell directly to the public? Do you sell to Cortines? What is your standard average? We, we serve uh, the final customer. Uh, we, we try to offer them uh, the best for their interest. We have a, a lot, uh, our sales team is a, is a team of experts in the, ma in the matter. So <laughs> we like to call them matrisologists. Matrisologists, <laughs> yes, I like yes, that. <laughs> because uh, they receive the, across, uh, along the year uh, several lectures by specialists. So they know how, what to offer you to, to, su to take care of your uh, ailments or your pain back or lumbar pain or, or what, whatever disease that you could have. It's funny because thinking about having a company coming to talk about mattresses is like, okay, bed bugs. I imagine bed bugs, you must have to change a mattress or do certain things to mattress. There must be a lifespan for a for mattress or recommendations. Yes, of, what of to course, look for. of course. The, uh, in fact, uh, we offer uh, as long as 15 years uh, warranty. So, but uh, you should change your mattress uh, before that because uh, the materials suffer uh, all over the time. So would you, you should change when it's not good for you. But, uh, sorry, I, I'm no, lost. No, no, no. <laughs> when one's going to buy a mattress, you were saying about different ailments. Yeah. So obviously there's the preference if you have a soft mattress, a harder yeah, mattress, and course. then a couple will want different specifications for the husband and wife. There must be a lot of actual so, yeah. options out there. Of course, uh, you, can have, you can have dual mattresses, so you can treat uh, the, the elements that you have and your partner uh, can do the same. The, we can offer uh, different uh, solutions for everyone who comes to the store. And when so people have to go and try the mattresses? Yes, yes, of course. That's it's why it's important to have your shop so uh, people can go in and... And test it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really important. So it's not just that our team uh, can recommend you one kind of mattress. You need to feel comfortable in that mattress. So that's uh, we offer that what we offer to them. And when um, people do you just sell mattresses, or do you do 
um, accessories around that, or yeah, you just yeah. dedicate to Yes, no, no, no. In fact, uh, we uh, don't only have mi colchon. Uh, we have uh, also nesting interiors. It's uh, uh, a store for sofas and armchairs and, we, and decoration. So uh, we, we offer all the, the, <laughs> the products. All that the things that you need for it to In your bedroom or in your home. So How did you get involved with the company? Well, I, I just uh, sent my CV uh, because uh, I like what they do. I like the, the flyers, the, the ads that I see online and, and such. So I, I tried and they, and they got me. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. But it's nice to see that, um, uh, and I would like for our international community to appreciate some of the companies that we have locally, Spanish, because I think foreigners are scared sometimes of, oh, it sounds so foreign, mi colchon. Yeah. But it's yeah. not, they've got mattressologists yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, we have, <laughs> so I, I would like to speak about the, our English speaking customer because uh, they're usually very demanding because they know what they want. That's not so usual. That's not uh, the, a regular thing. So they, they know what they want and we can offer them. We, uh, we have uh, premium brands as Imola or Ucla or Stressless, a lot of brands that they know. So they, they feel comfortable coming to our stores. So you have your own national brands, but then you've also got the yes. best of everything yes. so that everybody has their choice. Yes, and we then try. the fees, the, f the ease of being able to go to all the shops along the coast. Yes. I do like this mattressologist. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. I like that. That's the idea from, from our, our CEO, Jacobo. <laughs> well, muy bien. Jacobo nos gusta, mattressologist. <laughs> because I think it is important. We spend or should spend eight hours a day yes. in our bed. And so to have that correct support is fundamental. We all know what it's like to sleep in a lumpy, uncomfortable yes, bed. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's not just be comfortable. It has to be good for you in the uh, in long term. Uh, you spend, as you said, eight hours a day sleeping. You, you have to be covered and uh, your health has to be covered. So you have your stores are open, I suppose, Monday to Saturday. Yes. Uh, Mi colchon is M-I C-O-L-C-H-O-N, it's all written down anyway. Thank and you. And so you can, I suppose, go to the web and find out where yes, the closest course. stores are. Michaelchon.com and nesseninteriors.com. And then go to the stores and just like, uh, get you, do you serve them cups of tea while they're lying <laughs> on the bed? Just <laughs> well, the we, we have a, a coffee machine. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like to get the real feeling, you know, you're sitting up in bed, reading a book, having yeah. a cup of coffee. You can test it uh, all the time you, you need. <laughs> to, I, could to just I could see English people doing that. <laughs> yeah. I have to try and see what it's like to read my book. Of course, uh, you don't have uh, any other way to, to feel the, the, the bed or, or the armchair in the correct way. I just have one last question. It's a silly question. No. <laughs> but we have 147 nationalities in Marbella. Yeah. Have you noticed any particular preference different between, say, Spanish, English, Norwegian, German? Is there, in general, oh, a different preference of mattress? Uh, as, uh, as you said, uh, I, in, the, in the end, uh, every customer is a world, okay? But, but um, the English speaker customer, I don't know where they're from exactly, but uh -huh. they, they seem to be very, um, they have very clear what they need. They, they have, when so they come with an idea. Yeah. More education as to yeah. the, the options. Yes, yes, they, they have a really clear idea that what they need and, and they ask for it and, and we, we try to offer them what they really need, what they so really want. It must want. be nice for you as well, knowing that people understand the importance of yes. the option and the variety, yes, yes. whereas perhaps more with a national consumer, you're still educating yes. them to understand that in the long term, getting a good bed today yes. can make a big difference. Of course, of course. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> really, Francisco, delighted to meet you. It, it, I didn't think I talking about mattresses could be so much fun, <laughs> but I've learned a whole new word. I love words, and uh, mattressologist is a, is a good one. If you need a new mattress, check out Mi Colchon, a really well-established, reputable Spanish company. And we live in Spain, so why not support the companies that are here in the, in the country we've chosen to live in? Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, buenísima. Nicole. <laughs> and don't go away, because to finish off the program, we're welcoming back Marisa Moreno. Not only is she a very well-established and reputable lawyer of just law, she's also the honorary Danish consul and now also the representative for Denmark for the, Brit for the Chamber of Commerce. So a very busy lady. I'm very grateful that she'll be joining us in just a moment.
So here we are at Everest. Very cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stickers going up. Hey, yeah. Uh, my name is Govinda. I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, to Everest Fusion, to uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Sister Taperia. <laughs> Perfecto. <laughs> Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Joining me in the studio to finish off this week's program is the delightful Marisa Moreno. She's been coming to the program for years. She is the Danish consul. She's also now representative for the Danish Chamber of Commerce and, of course, very reputable and well-established lawyer from Just Law. So, Marisa, welcome back to the plateau. We had a chat <laughs> a few weeks ago, actually, at the Chamber of Commerce event in Malaga. Does it? Does there it? was a lot of cool people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of consuls and a yeah, lot of... It yeah, was a nice yeah, networking, yeah. but it was a little well, bit different it was, it was. to what we're used to down here. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's, a, it's another conception. Yeah, so, how long have you been involved now also with the Danish Chamber of Commerce? How do you have time <laughs> to do everything? It's just amazing. <laughs> and be well, here, Maria. Yeah, well, I've been involved with the Ch Danish Chamber of Commerce, well, Spanish Danish Chamber of Commerce uh, since uh, 60 years now. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't realize yeah, it was only yeah. when I saw you yeah, yeah. the other day in your element with all the other yeah. consoles <laughs> and yeah. or what have you. Uh, but you have, you know, you have to organize very well your agenda and sometimes to learn to say no because otherwise it's impossible because everybody wants uh, everything now and if it's possible for yesterday. So you have to say no, there's, there has to be here and there and so. It's a question of organization. Yeah. Good thing you've got a good legal brain on you. Yeah. And you know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Curiously, I'm going to ask you, although one associates Brexit with the British, it has actually affected many people. And you, in yeah. your legal capacity, yeah. get to see people of all different nationalities. Yeah. And it's curious to see how the Brexit situation is still very much a topic of conversation, yeah. of concern. And now there's changes of people before trying to prove they were... Um, um, Irish. Yeah, it would seem that now there's also a flow to become Spanish. Yeah, yeah. It's not only for Brexit. It is, of course, because if you have no any ancestors that is um, from European Union, it may be the easiest is, uh, for for the British is, uh, to be Irish, of course. And you know that um, it's uh, it's a cheap um, for cost. I mean, because I'm the Danish consul, that I know that we are not uh, very cheap for issues. Uh, to, to issues the, 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 our passports, but uh, Irish are cheaper and uh, are much easier, you know. But now people are coming from not only Britain, but uh, Americans, Canada, you know, um, and many other countries that are looking. All third world countries yeah, now. Yeah, that, yeah, that also, yeah that including, <laughs> including Britain is trying to find out any uh, fathers or parents or grandparents that are, um, have been in Spanish and they are realized that maybe they have a chance to have the citizenship. So we have have uh, 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 some consultation lately. Yeah? yeah, I have to feel that there, there has to be pros and cons. That if you win one way, you're going to pay for it in another way, in the sense of it. Uh, but obviously, to get that European status. Yeah. To be able to stay here more than 90 days is the objective. That's the point. You, you, we have realized that it's a lot of people from the States, of course, a lot of people from the from United Kingdom, that want to move or retire into here. This is, uh, you know, I think that uh, maybe it's because the south of Spain has a huge uh, cost in the south. Maybe if you see the picture of uh, the, um, you know, the map, European map, the the southern countries, the widest coast is in Spain. 
probably because Portugal has uh, well the north of uh, Portugal is more or less like England you know is more or less uh, for the weather point of view I mean so maybe Spain in this uh, point is, uh, is more competitive because we have a long coast with wonderful uh, weather and a lot of infrastructure, especially Malaga, Marbella, you know, so people are looking to us again, but no now like um, a tourist destination only. It's like a living destination, you know, many people that are moving to here and retiring to here, you know, the level of life here is very good. If you have a pension, an English pension, or a Danish pension, or American pension, you know how much the American, the people from, from, from the States pay for only for, for health insurance? And, uh, and, and here is, uh, for us, it may be expensive, and not for them. It's actually yeah. curious. I saw a video, and it was talking about the Spanish flag representing Thatcher and not representing yeah. the country yeah. and how other countries that yeah. treat their citizens like absolute dirt have people kissing their flag yeah. and yet in Spain I think the Spanish should feel exceedingly proud because on the world scale of hundreds of countries I think they're in the top 10 of being open to yeah. gay marriages I mean yeah. if you think about how open Spain really is yes. yeah. and the Renfe and the train infrastructures yeah. I yeah. mean in the States airport, we be going around on bus everywhere uh, airport uh, you know international airport the, the the harbor now even the city Malaga is a new city you know it's a different city and, and uh, it's, it's unbelievable how the, um, the Malaga is growing up you know it's uh, it's uh, it's probably is the the city that are going to grow most in Spain in the next 10 years. It's with a big the shame IT. that most of the foreigners land at Malaga Airport and then drive straight through Malaga without even visiting the city. And it's like Marbella's old town. Yeah. Some people don't know it's there, yeah, but it is the jewel. Yeah. And Malaga is a fabulous city, yeah, as you say, with the port and yeah, everything yeah. now and the yeah. historic yeah. part yeah. of the city. Where are you from yourself, Marisa? Well, I'm born in Malaga, but I grew up in Canary Island in Tenerife. So you but have, I have been the best studying, of Yeah, but I have been studying in France, England, the States. So. But you are a true Malaguena, yeah, which is... Well, uh, the, well, my pa, my father was from Madrid and my mother from Cordoba. So perfect combination. <laughs> yeah, perfect that's combination. It, that's it, so. How have the Danish been reacting with all the changes with, that we've had lately? Because with the pandemic, I think has also caused a lot of people to either move over or go back home and completely give up. Have you noticed a big change in oh, the yeah. Danish community? Yeah, yeah. The, Dan um, the Danish, uh, we have a... Uh, we have to bear in mind that uh, Denmark, um, if you think, is only 5.5 million people. So, and uh, we have uh, realized that there's a lot of uh, professionals and people that can work remotely that has uh, been moving into Malaga, Malaga City. It's, uh, it's funny because Malaga City to work remotely and to to to, to live with the family here. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of people have reevaluated their existence and as you say now that we are allowed a lot of people have done working from home i don't think even 50 percent have gone back to how it used to be yeah i really do think it's an enormous amount and also mm. it makes more sense yeah when you can do a zoom meeting why drive up and down waste all those hours that's it and it's not only the time that you you can spend in the, uh, the transport no, or the co commute, you know, is is uh, also the, the the diesel, the petrol that you you have to use to, for that, just for one person, you know. So it's good. I think it's good, and I think the pandemic has uh, teach us that uh, we want to stop and settle down and uh, just to have some more time with the family, some more time with yourself, if you want to you know time for yourself and that makes a lot of sense and in fact I think what we will do on that note is we will leave it there because we're going to go and have some time for ourselves <laughs> go and have a little yeah. catch up and a yeah. chat because it can't all be just work and now we've got you down this side of the coast for you Marisa Moreno muchísimas gracias thank you so much okay. how do you say thank you in Danish um, uh, tanke. Tanke. Yeah. Tak. 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 Tuck to you back. and tuck to you too. Thank <laughs> you for joining us once again to see what's happening behind the scenes in Marbella. Now, you can watch recordings of the program from the RTV 
marbear.tv website or you can just go to nicoleking.es with links to the RTV Marbear website and the recordings of the programme. Also to my column Marbear Moments in the Euro Weekly News and our Zero Hero website with an ever-increasing list of participating businesses who are giving free soft drinks to the designated drivers to remind us that it's nice to go out and party and to drink but then don't drive get yourself someone to drive you home and keep everybody safe take care of yourselves be nice to each other in november last month i bye for now one, 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 one. let the music get to your heart